Hello and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to give you an example of how to use or two examples of how to use the universal gas laws. So on the board I have the universal gas laws of PV equals NRT and that of course is fused for number of moles and PV equals NKT which is number of molecules. So I'm going to give you a question. I have got, to start with, I have got um, 120 kilopascals um, a 50 millimeter cubed tire of air at 20 degrees C springs a leak and loses 20% of its air. The volume halves, what would be the new pressure of the tire? So, this is the interesting part here. This is how I will set these kind of questions out. So, I've got a situation to start with and a situation after. So, I'm going to write P, V, N, or N, K, so this would be R, L, K, and C. Okay, so this is at the start, and this is at the end. So at the start, I have 120 times 10 to the 3 pascals. And I don't know the one at the end, but I do want to know. I know my volume is 50 millimetres cubed. So I need to convert this into metres. Since it's millimetres cubed, to go from millimetres to metres, I have to divide by 1,000. Because it's millimetres cubed, I have to do that three times. So I'm going to divide this by a thousand, a thousand again, and a thousand again. So 50 divided by a thousand, divided by another thousand, divided by another thousand is five times ten to the minus eight metres cubed. I don't know what this is. I do know what these are. They're my constants, and depending on which one I'm going to choose, I'm going to use moles for this one. Okay, so I'm going to use this as 8.31. And I do know my temperature to start with is 20 degrees. Remember, you must convert into Kelvin. So it's going to be 293 Kelvin. I do know at the end, my volume has halved. So I now know I've got 2.5 times 10 to the minus 8 meters cubed. And I do know I've lost 20% of the number of moles or molecules that I had in there. So, this is telling me so it's lost 20%. So, what I'm going to do is I need to find out how many I had here. And I'm going to use my PV equals NRT to work it out. So, PV equals NRT. So, N is PV over RT. So, that's what I'm going to do. I've got 100, 120 times 10 to the 3, times by 5 times 10 to the minus 8. I'm going to divide that by 8.31 and 293. And I get an answer of 2.46 times 10 to the minus 6 moles. I have lost 20% of that. So I only have 80% remaining. So I'm going to times this by 0.8 which is going to be 1.97 times 10 to the minus 6. Now, this number here remains the same, because it's a constant. And this is a little trick. I have not said the temperature has changed at all. I have not told you the temperature has changed, which means the temperature must be constant. So this must also be 293. I now have enough information to use PV equals NRT, or pressure is NRT over volume, to work out my new pressure. So I know my N, I know R, because it's 8.31, I know 293. I'm going to divide that by my volume, which is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 8. And my new pressure... I want to double check this here. So 2.5 times 10 to the minus 8. 1.97 times 10 to the minus 6 times by 8.31. So it's by 293. Uh, divided by 2.5 times 10 to the minus 8. My new pressure I'll double check this right there. So 2.5 times 10 to the minus 8 and 1.97 times 10 to the minus 6 
times by 8.31 times by 2.93 and then that divided by 2.5 times the minus 8 is yeah. My new pressure is 191 times 10 to the 3. So in fact my pressure has increased. And the reason I can explain this is because I had just randomly picked numbers out of my head is the fact that my volume is halved but I haven't lost as many molecules. So my volume has shrunk, but I actually haven't lost enough to compensate. So the fact that my volume has decreased significantly more than how much I've lost, this means my pressure would overall increase. Because if we look at the formula here, if this is decreased more than this, this would mean pressure would go up, okay? So that's one example there. Let's do another. So, this one, I have got a cylinder, a volt flask here, and I have got a syringe, and I'm pumping that gas in here, into here, and the pressure at the start is 101 kilopascals, what is the pressure of the container at the end? So again, I'm going to do the same thing I did before, P, V, N, R, T, I'm going to work with number of moles because it's much easier. Uh, start and end. So my pressure at the start is 101 kilopascals. My volume to start with is 0 0.08, okay? And the container is staying the same. So my container is going to be 0 0.08 after as well. Now R, of course, is 8.31. And I have said nothing about temperature. In fact, I haven't even given a temperature. Okay, and this is actually quite a neat little trick because I know it doesn't change. I'm going to actually make up a temperature. So I'm going to say I've got 293, I've got 20 degrees C here. All right, because I know it is constant. So let's have a look at this. I can actually use this to work out N. Okay, so I'm going to use PV equals NRT to work out what, at this temperature, for all of this information, what would be my number of moles I have? So PV is NRT, N is PV over RT. So my N would be 101, so instead of 3, times by 0.08, divided by 8.31, uh, divided by 293. So N is 3.31, okay. Now this is interesting. I am now going to inject 0.02 meters cubed into this container. The volume is not going to change of this beaker, but the number of gas particles will. So this here, this 0.02, is 25% of this here. So I'm going to increase the number of particles I have in my flask by 25%. So this N is going to increase by 25%. So let's times that by 1.25. And my N here is 4.15. I can then use this formula that I did before. Pressure is um, NRT over V to work out my new pressure. So 4.14 times by 8.31 times by 293 divided by my volume. Because my volume of the flask hasn't changed, 0.08. I get a pressure of 126.25 times 10 to the 3 pascals there, okay? So that there is a slightly different idea. What am I doing? I'm injecting number, but my volume is staying the same. So this is actually a really good method for you to analyse what's happening before and after the situation. A really good trick is if you're not told something is changing, that means it is constant. You can actually just put the value in. The reason you can do that is because technically, if I was to find the constant between them, it would remain the same each way and they would cancel each other out. So don't be afraid if you're not given the information to just put it in. Like I said, if I just prove it to you now, I know that R and T are constants, 
So I know that P V, P1 V1 over N1 equals RT. And I know that P1 V1 over uh, P2 V2 over N2 is RT. And so I can state that P1 V1 over N1 equals P2 V2 over N2. So this RT, all it is, is just an arbitrary constant that actually doesn't, if you look at these, they're not affecting at all. So that there are examples of using the universal gas law and affecting the number of moles.